G'day guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Mitch and this is the Mitch Does YouTube channel. Today we're talking all about the Precision Bella, which here in Australia retails for about 2,600. Now, as you can see, one of the key features of this machine is it's got an E61 group head, just like the machine that I use, the San Remo Cube, and many other machines out there like your rockets and ECMs. Now inside the machine, we have a copper 1.8 litre heat exchange boiler, which in my opinion is a great option. There's not a lot of flavour transfer from the boilers like you do in some other machines. Now, a lot of people will argue that a heat exchange is not great. You're wrong. I've done some tests. Uh, it's great. Check out the video in the link and you'll see for yourself. And inside the machine, we have a 2.3 litre water tank, which is a pretty solid capacity for a machine of this size. Um, but we're going to touch base on that shortly because there's a couple of really cool features about the water tank. Now, all of the water flow inside the machine is controlled by a dual vibration setup which is very similar to what you'll see in most machines of this price range, but as the name indicates, there's two of them. Now, the question has been raised in the past, having two noisy vibration pumps, is it twice as noisy? Well, sit tight, we will turn it on shortly and you'll see for yourself. Now, all of this is encased in a stainless steel body, which isn't the nicest finish. You know, it's not your mirror finish like you do on some of the other machines, but the price had to be cut somewhere. This machine was built for a price point not for a showpiece. Now we're gonna have a quick look inside this machine because as obviously a coffee drinker, but also a machine tech, I think it's very important to know how easy it is to get to the crucial elements while servicing. And also if something does go wrong, how easy can we fix this? So we will talk about how easy it was to access this in a moment, but for now we're just talking about the internals. As you can see, we've got a nice boiler here, well encased in a thermal blanket. Um, that does help with keeping the heat inside and also making sure it doesn't melt any of the wires around it. Very clever. Then we have the little pressure meter here, which is for your internal steam pressure that is adjustable. Um, nice and easy to get to because uh, that is fairly important from a service point. As you can see, you've got all your pressure valves, your overpressure valves, safety valves, etc. Really easy to access if one of them lets go. I can show you how easy it is to get to all these in a moment. That, that's super simple. This is just straight in the top of the machine. Then down the bottom there, you've got those red parts. That is your dual vibration pump. Um, not too hard to get to. It's probably not going to be something, you know, you're going to need to do in an emergency. But when you do need to get to them, a couple more bolts and you can get down there. Not a problem at all. So this is the main pressure gauge that is on the front of the machine. Nice and easy to get to as well. Um, they've thought really well about all of this. Um, you know, that's a fairly crucial part there. And if that leaks, obviously you're not going to be getting a correct reading. Nice and easy to get to if there's any leaks. Super simple. All of the wiring is done quite well. All of the colours are done correctly. Now, I know this sounds weird, but often with an Italian-made machine, they will use the same colour wire for half of the things. Doesn't make any sense. They've opted for the same wire doing the same thing here. Very well done. I'm actually quite impressed here. So with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's have a play with this thing so I can give you hopefully a full experience as to what it's like if you're owning one of these machines because there are a couple of really cool features that this machine has. So let's start with the water tank. At first I thought that this was the worst part of the machine, which even if it was, it's probably not the end of the world. The water tank design itself doesn't really change whether the machine can make a good coffee or not. But that aside, this is probably not the worst part of the machine. It's quite smart. Now it just sits in the back of the machine. It doesn't clip in and there it seems to be able to move around a lot, which I was a little bit concerned about. But then I'd realized you can fit a bigger water tank if you want. There's, there's a lot of room there. If you want a bigger tank, you can. There's a lot of room for other accessories and electronics inside this machine as well. If you really want to start expanding and modifying your machine. And also another great point with this is having an easily removable water tank is very important for me um, as I do make a lot of coffee and if the machine isn't plumbed in, I go through a lot of water. So 2.3 litres is a decent amount, but it's still, you know, I drink black coffee, which means I'm running long blacks. So I need to refill this often. I'm going to show you probably my favourite feature of this machine. So most water tanks on coffee machines are a little bit of a pain to refill. 
even like the cube here, I do need to remove all the cups so that I can access the lid for the water tank. In this case, you can leave all of your cups and your photos and whatever you're keeping up there. You just slide, move the water filter, and there's the tank. All of your cups and accessories can stay on top of the machine. You can replace the water filter with no tools whatsoever. Now to access the boiler as we did earlier, there is one Allen key on the top of this sliding tray. Remove that and just slide the tray all the way off the top. So we can access the entire internals of the machine with one bolt. Which in my opinion is very smart. Keeping the tech in mind is always a good way to ensure that people recommend a machine because generally anyone that plays with a lot of coffee machines gets an opinion and a big say on what is a good machine because I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but Mercedes-Benz mechanics often don't drive a Mercedes-Benz. Let's just think about it. Now, let's fill her up and turn her on. Now, as a little side note, this is something I just realized and something I haven't really thought about in the past. Plugging this in, it is probably the longest power cord I've ever seen on a home espresso machine. So thank you for taking that into mind because not everyone has a power point right where they want their machine. Now we're gonna turn the machine on and you're gonna see probably another really cool little feature of this machine. It doesn't really mean a lot, but it definitely looks cool. So the one button, little green light turns on here, then the white light, and then keep an eye on this one, green, white, red. You all know what that is. So I've had this machine on display at the cafe for a little while and I haven't been able to have the porta filter in the machine on display because if you look closely, it's nice. That's fine. It looks very similar to a rocket. However, that's as far in as it will go. Now, once there's some heat in the group head, it might soften the seal and it will come further across. But I feel like they could have just put a slightly thinner seal in there just to smoothen that up, make it look nice and parallel, and make sure that that group handle's right in there. And I have to say, because of the heat exchange boiler, very fast warm up time, we have touched base on this subject before, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into it, but there are many benefits to a heat exchange boiler. Now that the internals of the machine are at the correct temperature, we're gonna run some water through this just to heat up the group head itself, and I wanna see how noisy this thing is. So lift the lever, Move the steam wand, lift the lever. That's not too bad. That's very quiet. I'm pretty impressed. That's fairly quiet for a fairly large machine. There's a lot of room inside there to echo, um, but it's not really giving that effect. So there's some good mounting on those pumps, which is uh, reducing a lot of that resonating inside the machine. It's quite clever, done quite well. While we're waiting for the group head to come up to temperature, I'm just gonna run the steam wand. I'm just curious to see what it does. There's a lot of play there, which is not the end of the world. Decent amount of water in there, which is pretty standard. Seems to have a decent amount of power. I would like to know if there's a modification to tighten up that slack because that was a complete rotation and a quarter before it opened the valve. I feel like we can do better than that. And again with the hot water tap. So that was pretty much the same. So at least they're consistent. Now, of course, we need to make an espresso. So I'm gonna go and grind some coffee off camera because grinding coffee on camera is a sin. Okay, Lance, I'm watching you. Everyone tag Lance Hedrick. So using the standard basket in the porta filter, I have put 20 grams, which might be too much. We're about to find out, but this is my favorite part of the test. You get out of the way. Do you see the problem? 
this is why we go bottomless. Well, it's one of the reasons. Now this machine doesn't weigh enough. So it moves around a lot. Let's go. Probably going a little bit fast. So we got 42 grams out in about 25, 27 seconds. It's not too bad. Let's give it a taste and see how we go. That's a perfectly good espresso. Well done. I didn't dial it in. I just left it on the same grind setting for the San Remo, which I've got set at seven bar of pressure. I'm assuming that this is set at nine bar of pressure thereabouts being a vibration pump can be a little bit tricky to know exactly where it's going to sit but I have a device that tells us what pressure the machine is extracting at I would also like to point out the perfect espresso puck this is very impressive I look at these a lot it's something I definitely do a lot of and then break it in half and you can look inside it and look for how consistent the extraction is. If there's any discoloring, lighter, darker, you know that, well, the barista hasn't done their job properly because there is water going all over the place. But this is pretty good. So I did my job and the machine did its job. Good job. I need to stop saying job. So this is a device from Passato. It measures temperature and pressure straight out of the group head, any E61 style group head fits, Lama Zocos, etc. And I have tested this through quite a few machines, great little device. Um, we're not looking at temperature today because we've looked at many, many E61 heat exchange boilers. The results are always the same from this. There's a million videos on the internet that already cover that subject. But we are obviously going to look at the pressure just to see what this is extracting at. Now there's a few ways to do that. But what I'm going to do is you can block the valve completely once you have filled up the group head with water. So you run it until you get a nice constant stream, block it off and see what the pressure ramps up to. And it should be nine bar of pressure. So let's run some water through. Once you have a nice constant stream here, you know that it is full and then we close. Whoa, on the money, nine bar on the dot. Just gonna clean up the mess of the nine bar explosion. That's pretty standard. When you're doing a back flush, the pressure has to go somewhere. Anyway, we're not going into that. That's completely normal. I must say that that was pretty impressive. Uh, I tested back to back five or six times Every time it hit nine bar and it stayed at nine bar, which is probably the even more impressive part. Um, typically a vibration pump machine will hover anywhere between eight and 10, sometimes up to 11 in some cases, especially if the machine isn't looked after. Um, but that sat at nine bar for a very long period. I actually ran it for 30 seconds straight under extreme pressure and it sat at nine bar. Um, please don't do that to your machine. You can, part of black flushing is running but anyway, just don't do that test. I've done it for you, it's good. Now I will be honest, I'm not sure if the dual vibration pump is the reason behind why this works so well. I don't even know if the dual vibration pump work in sync or if one is for steam and one is for espresso. But whatever the point is, it works very well. It does pull an extremely impressive espresso shot. Now that's cold and it's still pretty good. So overall, I'm quite impressed with this machine. For the price, it makes a very good coffee. A couple of little things that I would like to see improved, but for the money, it's pretty good. Um, I am very impressed. Would I own this machine? No, it's vibration pump. Um, I'm just not a fan of vibration pumps. They're just too noisy. But for the price, again, I don't think you're gonna find a better machine than this for that money. You can tell me I'm wrong in the comments, that's fine. But overall, very impressed. If you found this information helpful, please let me know by clicking that subscribe button. That'd be very, very helpful. 
to let me know that you actually enjoy watching this stuff and you want to see me do, do more reviews on machines of this caliber or let me know what you would like me to review leave some comments below let me know what you want to see but for now i'll say thank you so much for watching have yourselves a great day and happy brewing